Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my bookish life. Today I have some bookish unboxings for you. It just almost hit me in the face. A lot of these I know what they are, but I uh, budgeted myself some money to um, get some books on thrift, thrift books and Better World books because there were sales going on. So I have a haul from each of those places. I have my book of the month and I have my books and treasures. So starting with book of the month for June this month, I was hovering between three of the choices. This book sounded so good. This is the historical fiction option. Of course, it comes with, a, you'll never guess what happens next. We have a bookmark there. This is during the Blitz um, in London. Three women lift the spirits of home front brides in wartime Britain when clothes rationing leaves wedding dresses scarce in this heartwarming novel based on true events. I want to say that it's dual timelines, but that's mostly because I love dual timelines and I want all my books to have dual timelines. I don't think that that is actually the case though. <laughs> I've just really been into World War II books lately and um, anything that has to do with how people coped and survived while there was a war going on just sounds really interesting to me. What really swayed me is that Becca at Hicks Picks Books, um, really recommended this one. She said it was wonderful and I just value her opinion. It tipped the scales in favor of this one. However, I did add both of those thrillers to my list at some point to try and read. Okay, right, and then I already opened these, but I have a little haul from Thrift Books. I really wanted this book. This is the book that I wanted. The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. Um, this says Noah's sister, Megan, has disappeared, and he thinks the Clarksville City Zoo has something to do with it. The animals are acting strangely, leaving cryptic messages for Noah and his friend Ella, friends Ella and Richie. Following the clues, they soon find themselves lost in a secret world more astonishing and dangerous than they ever imagined. Befriending polar bears, penguins, and rhinos on the way, Noah and his friends embark on a wild adventure to find Megan and bring her home. So I wanted this in my classroom because I have a ton of animal lovers in my class this year, and they're going to be in my class next year again because I have fifth through eighth graders. This, just look at this cover. It's so beautiful. I also found this book, Finding Wonders, Three Girls Who Change Science by Janine Atkins. This book was recommended by Kim at Expedition Through Pages. It is nonfiction in verse and it talks about the lives of Maria, Marion, Mary Anning, and Maria Mitchell. So I am really excited to read this one and just have more books about women in science in my classroom. I love a good novel in verse, even though this isn't really a novel because it's nonfiction, but it just sounded so good when she was talking about it. So when I saw it, I decided to pick it up. And then this is a little professional development for me. This is the brain. Oh, this is Teaching with the Brain in Mind by Eric Jensen. So I am just fascinated with the brain and brain research. I recently read um, Remember by Lisa Genova, and it talks about like the different parts of the brain and how we remember things. And it just had me searching for books that um, center around teaching with the brain in mind. And lo and behold, there's a book with that title. Then I have a Better World Books order. Better World Books is a used book service that for every book that is purchased donates um, books to um, those in need. I really just feel like my buying books is just helping others at that point. And, you know, so that is wonderful. If you have never used Better World Books before, there is a link down in my description for um, a percentage off. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. Anybody uh, can have this link. But if you do use it, it will give me like points that I can use on my own orders. So, you know, it's up to you. But look at this bookmark. It's 
gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, it's very plain, but I just love those colors, honestly. Okay, so this says 33 million raised for literacy, 32 million books donated, 100 million books sold, and 393 million books reused or recycled. That is awesome. That it just, it just feels like a really good com company to give my money to. So uh, they had a, I don't know, it was some percent off sale. So I decided that I should partake and, you know, do my good deed for the day. So I have two books that, these two books are more professional development for me. So I have uh, Teaching Adolescent Writers by Kelly, Kelly Gallagher and uh, Reading Reasons Motivational Mini Lessons for Middle and High School by Kelly Gallagher. Kelly Gallagher is my idol. He is a premier expert on teaching reading in ways that doesn't kill the love of reading, what he calls read aside. I read a lot of his work when I was in school for getting my reading teacher certification. And um, I just saw that he had some more books out there and wanted to get them. So I feel like both of these books are really going to improve my literacy instructions. So, and then this is The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. This is a book that's been on my radar for a while. It was the pick for a program at my library, um, but they haven't done that since before COVID. So it's been on my radar since before then. It just sounds so good. You have the um, lighthouse keeper and his wife want a child really badly. They very much struggled with infertility and, and infant loss um, in their lives. And suddenly um, one day a boat washes to shore and there's a baby on the boat and they decide to raise it as their own, which is seems to be a decision that could have some major consequences. So um, I'm really excited to dig into this. Penciled in my book journal, <laughs> it says that I'm going to buddy read this book with Daniela Bukara and Amy at A Star Reads in the month of July. So I'm hoping that that's still happening. Uh, but we will see. <laughs> this life, right? And then this is a book that has been on my wish list since for forever. Uh, this is Terrible Typhoid Mary, A True Story of the Deadliest Cook in America. And this is by Susan Campbell Bartoletti. Typhoid Mary's story is absolutely fascinating to me. I am so intrigued by this woman who has no idea how much chaos she is creating and refuses to believe it. So I had it like on my want to read list and I kind of ignored it, but then I read The Boy Who Dared by Susan Campbell Bartoletti and I loved that book. And seeing that she also wrote this one, just really made me think, okay, it's been on my radar for a while. I'm absolutely fascinated with this topic. I'm just, I'm just going to get it. Mary was a cook and the family that she worked for, six of the family members suddenly died. And they determined that they died of typhoid. And they also determined that they got typhoid from her. Now, my understanding is that she didn't that she was like completely unaware that she had given them to get that she was carrying typhoid. However, I don't know if that's completely true. I will learn about that in this book. So this is the biography of her story. Um, it says, how did this private and obscure domestic cook become one of the most notorious and misunderstood women in American history? What happens to a person whose name and reputation are forever damaged and who is really responsible for the lasting legacy of Typhoid Mary? It was written in 2015. 
So that's quite a bit ago, but oh my gosh. Okay, so the story is, <laughs> so the story is actually just this, like this, this is the biography. This is a, a afterward and a photo album. I don't know who some of these people are because, you know. Dr. Josephine Baker, she's super famous. I don't remember who she is, though. Oh, a timeline of events in Mary's life. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and then notes. Sources. Check out all these sources. Holy buckets. And then an index. Oh, my gosh. I can use this as a model for nonfiction for years to come. Then I have been on this huge little house on the prairie kick. Like, huge. Thanks a lot, Rainy. Rainy and I are currently reading through so we we started with Little House on the Prairie actor memoirs now we're we're reading through the actual Little House on the Prairie books by Laura Ingalls Wilder and then I was looking and there is Old Town in the Green Groves this is by Cynthia Ryland Cynthia Ryland is a fabulous writer and this is Laura Ingalls Wilder's Lost Little House Years. So there are two years that Laura Ingalls Wilder did not write about. And those are those years that take place between the banks of Plum Creek and the shores of Silver Lake. So Cynthia Ryland imagined what those Lost Little House Years were like based on the memoirs that were never published. That's what this is. And I just think that that sounds really cool. I love historical fiction that takes like real people and imagines their life during a time that is unknown. I just think that's really fun. So I am excited. I hope that I can get all of this library stuff off. And then the other one that I found was by Wendy McClure. And I keep on finding stuff by Wendy McClure and just want to read it all. But I've never read anything from her yet. So this is My Adventures in the, in the Lost World of Little House on the Prairie, The Wilder Years. And so this is... For anyone who has ever wanted to step into the world of a favorite book, here is a pioneer pilgrimage, a tribute to Laura Ingalls Wilder, and a hilarious account of butter-churning obsession. Wendy McClure is on a quest to find the world of the beloved Little House in the Prairie author Laura Ingalls Wilder, a fantastic realm of fiction, history, and places McClure has never been to yet somehow knows by heart. She traces the pioneer journey of the Ingalls family, looking for the big woods among the medium trees in Wisconsin, wading in Plum Creek, and enduring a prairie hailstorm in South Dakota. She immerses herself in all things Little Prairie, exploring the story from fact to fiction and from the TV shows to the annual summer pageants in Laura's hometowns. Whether she's churning butter in her apartment or sitting in a re replica log cabin, McClure is always per in pursuit of the Laura experience. Along the way, she comes to understand how Wilder's life and work have shaped our ideas about girlhood and the American West. The Wilder Life is a loving and irreverent, spirited tribute to a series of books that have inspired generations of American women. It is also an incredibly funny first-person account of obsessive reading and a story about what happens when we reconnect with our childhood touchstones and find that our old loves have old love has only deepened. So, oh, and this is just coming right off. Look at that. Get rid of that. <laughs> oh, look at it. Oh, it's pretty. <gasps> like new. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's signed by Wendy McClure. My name is not Rita, but it is signed by Wendy McClure and it says happy birthday. It's also not my birthday. Okay, so there's my Better World Books haul. I spent $25 on one, two, three, four, five, six books. So not a bad deal. 
Then we have my books and treasures box. This is a used book subscription service. And there's just always something fun to look forward to. There's always a used book. There's always a mug. And then there's coffee or tea. So then there's a whole bunch of other bookish items that you, oh. Room spray. This exploded. I think that it is contained into this bag though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try cleaning this and uh, I'm gonna see if it's still usable because it does it does actually smell really good. This is really cute. It's like a coaster and it looks like an old library card. There's gonna be a time very soon where adults have no idea what this is. Like my students don't know what this is. Which is sad. <sighs> I love that. That's really cute. Bookish quote stickers. Uh, let's see. Life is like a book. Drink tea and read books. Women who read are dangerous. A cover is not a book. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its movie. All the secrets in the world are contained in books. Books, coffee, sweater, repeat. So many books, so little time. Cute. And, all right. My Crave coffee. It is Crave. Yay. All right. We have hazelnut, southern pecan, and butter toffee. All right. And then. We have the, oh my gosh, there's more in the mug box. Let's see what this is, shall we? I mean, maybe we shan't. <laughs> I can't get it open. <laughs> there it is, okay. Okay, so this is soap. It looks really pretty. <laughs> I don't know. Can you, I don't know how easy it is to see those colors, but it's like a pinkish and a purple and it's kind of swirled. Um, can't tell what that smells like, but it's kind of pretty. And then this one, again, can't really tell what it smells like, but oh, oh look at it. It's a nice big size too. I like that. And then it comes with a book. That's really cool. That's so cool. So it comes with a bookmark. And the bookmark kind of stretches out around the whole book. And then it always comes with a book. And you can request different categories. I get the middle grade because um, I can put it in the classroom then. Holes. <laughs> I love this book. So many of my students love this book. In fact, a lot of my students were trying to think of holes read-alikes because they wanted a good book after holes. Louis Sakar is the author and we have Stanley is the main character and he through random circumstances ends up at this like juvenile detention camp and their job at this camp is to dig holes. So all they do all day is dig holes and nobody knows why and um, it's just... Yeah, it takes place at Camp Green Lake. This is one of the most iconic first lines ever. <sighs> Man, okay, so it is. There is no lake at Camp Green Lake. 
<laughs> there is no lake at Camp Green Lake. I don't know why that's so iconic, but I always, like, when I think about good first lines, for some reason, that's one that always comes to me. And I don't, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. So anyway, so there's holes. This is really a book you can't have too many copies of. This one has a sneak peek of Small Steps. Yeah, Small Steps, which is the sequel. I always like it when there's a sneak peek of the next next one. When there's a sneak peek, then sometimes they're like, okay, so I read the sneak peek and now I need that book. And I, you know, have that one in my classroom as well, but it's definitely not as popular as this first one as Holes. So um, yeah, we will get that one added to my classroom library. So it goes like that, but as you're reading, this this stays on the cover, and then it goes around like that. That's pretty. I'm not gonna hold up all these books. I'm just not. I'm, I'm not. I almost dropped my Better World Books haul just by itself. I just, I just, I can't. I'm sorry, but I can't. <laughs> uh, however, <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff there. Have you read any of these books? Have you heard of any of these books? Do any of them sound appealing to you? I would love to hear from you down in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, please make sure you're subscribed. I hope that you're finding something wonderful to read. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.